Hey Indie Warriors, good to be with you once again, Old Gamer Joe, bringing you some hack and slash action today as we look at 2D platformer, action game, roguelike, whatever you want to call it, Blade Assault on the Steam PC platform. This is a game that was released into early access back in June of 2021. If you happen to be the type of person that likes to wait for everything to be completed in a game and wait for the full release like I am, well you'll be happy you did with Blade Assault because now you have a variety of different players playable characters, over 40 unique weapons to use, just a lot of content in this game. Blade Assault begins with the lead character Kill, apparently locked up in prison alongside his little robot friend, and of course trying to escape. What unravels is a deeper story with a lot of intricacies actually, taking place in the city of Esperanza, where the rich kind of run the show, and of course Kill and a lot of mercenaries don't like that so much. You do meet some pretty interesting characters along the way, I like the overall premise, I don't think the writing is fantastic, I don't think the dialogue is amazing, but it serves the purpose and thematically, I quite like what's going on in Blade Assault. But really, you'll forget about the story altogether and forgive any of those shortcomings quickly because this game feels great to play. First and foremost, it's all about the action, as it should be. <laughs> In Blade Assault, you have your standard hacking and slashing for close range melee. You of course can go through enemies by dashing and getting around them that way. You can cling to walls, you can reach higher areas with a double jump. All of the basics. You also have some really cool special secondary attacks that you can use. Whether you're using skill based attacks or your sub weapon, that's going to drain a little bit of your MP. And obviously, you'll need to keep an eye on your HP, so, well, you don't die. I found the combat to be really satisfying throughout. There are a lot of enemies that can creep up on you at once, and some of them will throw poisonous potions at you, some of them will slowly swing at you, and it's really satisfying to take them down in hordes and waves. I really did quite enjoy this combat engine. After you've battled through the beginning of the game, you'll find what is essentially your main hub or base, the Jazz Bar, where you can perform a variety of different upgrades and also unlock some different characters who have their own unique styles of play, and that was awesome as well. There are a lot of different currencies in this game and a lot of different upgrades to be done, so you'll sort of need to pick and choose, and there's also different elementals that can be attached to you, like flame or ice. One of my personal favorites was the ice ability where you could slide or dash across enemies and then freeze them along the way. That was super cool, no pun intended. You can upgrade your weapons, you can upgrade your personal statistics, like how much health you have, all of that stuff is pretty customizable, and that's a strong point of this game. You do feel like you're getting stronger despite the fact that it is a grind, you're gonna go through a lot of the same areas again and again, time after time, and that was one of the features of this game that I didn't like so much, having to fight the same bosses over and over again, but that's just part of this genre, I understand that, it comes with the territory. As you progress through the levels, you'll also have some of the characters characters show up on the maps from time to time where you can purchase items from them with one of the many currencies. I don't know if we necessarily needed all of these different forms of currency personally. It does get a little bit confusing, but it's also not a big deal. There's also chests along the way that you can optionally open up. This could increase the battle difficulty, however, so you'll want to be cautious, but if you're low on health, you might want to take that risk because restoring your health means that you'll live, but you'll be dealing with some really tough enemies. Sometimes things felt a little bit time-based as well, and the enemies appeared to get stronger and stronger the longer I took to take them out. So even though you are going through what feels like the same areas time after time, I did appreciate all of these customizable options coming together to make each run feel a little bit unique. The weapon variety is also really nice because if you don't like a speedy sword, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, there's a giant axe for example, and it's a little bit slower and more methodical. It changes the way that you play the game pretty significantly. My favorite though is when a fancy space limo shows up, you can hop in and then purchase some premier items, though normally I couldn't afford them. So the combat feels great and steals the show, very fast and fluid, but also I really thought the game ran brilliantly. I was getting a locked 170 frames per second on my PC, and I thought the visuals were fantastic. I'm a big fan of pixel art, as you know if you're a fan of this channel, and it looks wonderful here. The game never slows down, never hitches, lots of detail to all the different enemies, good variety there. The bosses are a little, uh, not my favorite necessarily. I'm not a big fan of boss fights, as you also may know, but still some creativity.
creativity did go into their designs, even though they feel rather spongy. I loved the visual style of this game, though. Very Blade Runner-esque, very futuristic looking. Fantastic. Sound design is another strong point of Blade Assault. I really enjoyed the softer moments, where the game wisely doesn't use much music at all. And then the more cranked up action moments featuring techno beats and electronic synths and all of that are fantastic. All of the slashes sound really good, too. Overall, with Blade Assault, there's enough to help it stand out from the pack here. It's a crowded genre, but it does a great job of offering some exciting combat. The visual style is really enjoyable, and it sounds good to boot. I think the story is a little bit lacking in spots, despite a promising premise. And I do feel like they didn't need all of these different currencies necessarily, and it gets repetitive like this genre tends to at times, having to fight the same bosses over and over again and seeing the same areas over and over again. But still, the gameplay loop is addicting enough. I could bore you with all of the finer details and intricacies of this game and all the different items, over 90 of them, but why bother? Go play Blade Assault for yourself. It's super fun, and reviews that give everything away suck. Thank you so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to pay tribute to our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Bill T, Christian Cruz, Kevalo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C Coil, Skepticism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS, the 8th, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, and Lex Noyle. Thank you so much for all you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, please head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.